Hi, everybody. Welcome to my Master Your Magnetism podcast, where I bring on top experts to help you tap into your feminine energy and shift your vibe so you'll naturally create the life and relationship you've always wanted. Today, I'm so excited to be talking with Rory Ray again. Welcome, Rory. Thanks for being here with me. Oh, hi, Helena. This is always such a pleasure. We always have so much fun recording these episodes together. For those of you who aren't familiar with Rory, she is a world-renowned feminine energy dating and relationship coach whose programs and newsletters and videos have helped millions of women all around the world. And I know I hear from women all the time who are feeling nervous because they feel like they may have pushed their man away and they want to know how to recover from those moments and reconnect things. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So let's dive in, Rory. What's the first thing you want to say? on this topic oh my goodness well first of all you cannot mess it up permanently with a man who is right for you you're okay even if you did it a hundred times and he keeps going away and coming back all you need to do is recover all you need to do is find a better way to speak with him or enact with him than whatever was making it feel messed up Mm, I agree. I don't think you can mess things up with a man who's truly right for you. Now, in the early stages of dating, maybe she met a man online and over text him or was in her masculine energy and yes. the guy just disappeared. That's not really what we're talking about here, right? Right. It's not. Um, and I, even if it's the first time you've ever met a guy, I think if you mess up, that is in your idea of messing up and it might be the most charming thing in the entire world to him so we're so busy labeling our own behavior that you know it, it's not always what's really going on there are you know certain things that if we could just all observe certain ways of being and relating to a man where it feels um respectful to him and it feels uh, feeling filled rather than reaction for however you think relationship should go or whatever your concept is of what he should be like if we start coming from a different place i call this being coach like but also mm. it's just putting the love above and your needs and your wants above whatever training we might have had of how to tell the other person what they're doing wrong. If we can just get that going, everything will turn out all right. And men turn around on a dime, he'll get over it. That is so true. So how would you like to do this? Do you want to start with some ways that we do actually push our men away? Would that be helpful? Yeah, sure. Let's talk in terms of communication to start with, okay? Mm -hmm. So if we say that I messed up through overdoing something, let's talk about that not in this specific way. Well, let's include it. I'll, I'll, I'll make it another point. Let's say in communication with him, whether you're contacting him a lot or what the words are that you're saying. Let's, let's, I think I got it to like three sections here. So the first one is you, you did this wrong. You did this wrong. You are a horrible person. You don't know how to do this. You're not paying attention. You're not doing this. It's essentially, it's an attack mode, right? Yes. All right. So a second attack mode would be something that we might not notice as much as noticing when we're outright, you know, spears out uh, in the air from us to mm -hmm. them. It, it feels like an attack, but this might not feel like an attack because I, I experience it all the time and it is so interesting and it is also uh, painful to get. And that is the why. Why did you do that? Why did that happen? Why did you forget my birthday? Hmm. Why, why aren't we going to this thing? Why didn't you get gas in the car? You know, why didn't you look at a map? This is this could be said in attack mode, like, like forcefully and leaning forward. Why did you do that? Why did you do that with anger? Or it could just be the kind of why that our mothers might have said to us. Why did you do that, honey? Why did that happen? Well, 
what you know and it's enough to make you start to question yourself and that's what he does when you say why did that happen why did that happen he immediately goes on the defensive don't you do you feel like you want to jump to the defensive when he does that to you Yes, it doesn't sound like an attack in an overt way, but deep yes. down it feels that way, doesn't it? Exactly, exactly. So we need to replace the outright attack that uses the word you directly, and then the one that can be vaguely, seemingly helpful or nice, but actually is an attack, is a spear, the why. And we can move into forget about him. Forget about what he did or didn't do. You know, he didn't call you. He didn't send a card. He didn't do this. His actions, if they are the focus of our discontent and we feel disappointed, yes, all those come into play. And the moment we start with that, the moment we lead with the disappointment and about his behavior, we've kind of lost that moment with him. That's where it feels messed up because he has no choice at that moment unless he's amazing. And my husband can do it, actually, if I accidentally fall into that. And maybe yours can. But mm. it's not usual for a man to do anything but defend himself. Just like we would when if he said, why didn't you put the dishes away last night? You know, why would you wear that awful dress? <laughs> why are you 10 minutes late, honey? You know, and the only thing we can think to do is defend. Well, and we explain, well, this has been, this is what I did, which is the most masculine energy thing we could do. That is a mess up in our part, but we'll, we'll talk about our responses later, okay. talking about his response to an attack we make. So he's going to do that same thing. He's going to say, well, and then he's going to explain it. But a lot of men aren't going to just explain it or say, you know, why did you ask me why? That didn't feel good. That would be a very unusual man, but that would be what I'd like you to say. Mm -hmm. And instead of um, just defending and explaining, he may say, why did you ask me that? Why are you being so mean? Why are you such a bitch? Why? This is what likely will happen. And he'll just slam the door. You are always on my ass. You're always trying to tell me what I'm doing wrong. He may actually respond that way. Now, if he responds with the explanation, you're just going to feel more disappointed in his nature because it's not a loving response. You feel kind of yucky and it never gets solved, really. And you're going to feel horrible and more angry if he slams the door or yells back at you, which is very, very likely. And this is how things feel like they're just going to pot. They're going to hell. And like you messed up because you started it. So all you have to do <laughs> is not do those things, not trigger him with the uh, direct attack, how horrible he is, or the why, but to simply focus on you. So I'll take a breath so you can start, and then we'll go into how you focus on you and what you say. I'm loving everything you're sharing. And what's coming to me is, well, what happens if he does mess up or does do something wrong or hurt our feelings. So I think we're going to go into it on how we actually can respond. And I think we can actually use these moments to bring the right man closer ultimately. Right. Yeah. So that is great. So it's not like you're messing up and things are getting more and more damaged. You can actually use these moments to strengthen the relationship and pull him in closer. If he's the right man for you. I love that. So yeah, let's go into how to do that. All right. Great. So let's start from if you feel like you've messed up. What you want to do is not do these things that we all do. The first one we all do is grovel. I'm so sorry. Texting him a million times, basically trying to get closure, get forgiveness, and get reassurance that all is okay and he, he, was, he was all right with it. He got over it. This is, I would say, 90% of us. Yes. I certainly feel that way when I feel like I messed up and uh, I have the urge to fix it. Well, that urge to fix it is also masculine energy and we need to just, you know, not do that. Having a coach is very helpful 
that you can, you know, Voxer or, you know, email in the middle of the night saying, I did this this afternoon. I, I you know, it's like, a, it's like drunk, drunk thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, you just feel completely unable to, you know, quote unquote, let it go. And if somebody should say, can you just let it go? It'd be all right. You would want to hit them. I would. So instead, it's just a matter of practice and having somebody maybe supportive, a girlfriend who says, just hang in there. Let's watch TV together. Let's write down better ways to talk. And let's write down the next thing I'm going to say, which is the redo. I think I have some videos on my YouTube channel about how to redo. There are lots of them there, I believe, that might be able to help you. Awesome. But... <laughs> But here's, this just feels like a conversation. Helena. It's this so is much so fun. Awesome. I'm just hanging on your every word. I can't wait to hear all your thoughts on this one. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a video of you from you on the redo. So yeah, I'm loving this. I can't wait to hear what you have to say on that. All right. It, it, redo, the word redo would probably be in the title. So what you would say to him is, and you're not going to text him right away. You're not going to do any of that. He is going to reach out to you. He's either going to say, like, he's forgotten it. You want to go have dinner? Or he's going to say, you know, I was really, you know, put off by that. Maybe we should take a break. Or something. It's going to be whatever he's going to say. And then you would respond with, sweetie, I feel terrible. I know that this isn't about me. This is about you feeling terrible. And I'm really sorry. May I have a do-over? Ah, not a redo, a do-over. That's mm -hmm. the word. They're called do-overs. So you can have a do-over. And he may or may not respond right away, but he's he will, like, perk up. Because all of a sudden, you've assumed something uh, responsible that's different than just, you know, groveling, which he can't stand. He kind of wants to hear a sincere apology. I know my husband wants to hear a sincere apology, but I'm usually still angry because I haven't said everything and I really don't feel like apologizing. So I'm sure most of the women I know and all of you out there probably don't feel like apologizing if you really, he messed up, right? Mm. So you want to say, can I have a do-over? Okay, what does that look like then? It looks like, you know, uh, I felt, and here you start the way you would start if you started the best way from the beginning. If you started with a feeling message, if you started the modern siren way, the feminine energy way, you would end up, you know, bypassing all of this messiness. However, the messiness, by the way, is not a horrible thing because that's how you guys learn. That's how the the couple, that's how you and he learn how to function together. It's how you learn how to talk. And if you're willing to redo, whoa, he's going to be happy. He can accept a certain amount. He can accept a lot of brutality. That totally. is very true. Yeah. He can. And when, when the, the redo is actually an improvement on the communication and he can feel that you actually understand, you know, what's bothering him about that communication and how you can fix it. So it would look like now we're focusing on us. Now you're focusing on you. You're saying, I feel so bad and abandoned and horrific when um, I'm not recognized on my birthday. I feel unloved and uncared for and I feel so angry and pissed and I am so sorry. I just went with that rather than letting you know how important it feels to me. And how could you know i'd like to do a, a redo to the whole conversation and that would be like and he'll say okay what's that and much better if you could do it in person you know if he comes over you know to do it in person because it's going to be harder for you you have to stand there and breathe and say really hard stuff which is oh, i feel really afraid to even open this conversation I feel so triggered. He's going to be looking and staring at you because you're talking about you and he thinks it's about him. And it, it is sort of, but it's also mostly about you. So you want to say, I'm sorry, I'm just finding my way through this. I know that uh, you know, I'm not used to talking like this. I, I just wanted you to know how important this was to me, or I made a big deal out of getting there on time. And 
I would be if it was a movie, but I didn't really care that much. I don't know what happened. I don't know why I attacked, but I'm aware of it now. That this is some kind of pattern for me, and I don't want to do it again. Can you let me know? Is there a way you can let me know if I start in like that again? And is there a way I can let you know if, if I feel triggered so that we don't have to go for the whole fight attack thing? Is there a, a keyword or a code word or something we could do to let each other know, you know, when to, to change and when to just speak about, you know, what's going on? Like for me, Right now, I feel so much like I want to hit you because <laughs> I'm still mad at you. I still feel mad at you. I just still feel wronged and I still feel bad and I still feel angry. And yet I really care for you and I love you and I don't want to, I don't want to put that on you. How could we fix this? So you express as much as you need to express. And if you do it beforehand, like I didn't have a chance to do it beforehand. I was thinking of a specific situation. You want to write it out, talk into the mirror, talk as if you're talking to him, if he's uh, put him on a wall kind of, and talk to him that way. And you will start to work it through. You work down from the most superficial stuff that you, that you felt and that you were thinking down to the core, which is I felt lonely. I felt really abandoned. I guess I have a history of that. And, you know, it's not your responsibility. And I'm really sorry I laid that on you. And I would really love to not ever do that again. And I'd really appreciate if, you know, we had a, a way for you to signal me that I'm falling into that so that I can step back and catch a breath and do it differently. Would you be willing to work on that with me? And also, how can we make this better for me where I get the birthday recognition or um, you and I work out how not to be late or any of these things? And that's it. That's a, that's a do-over. And it's scary as all hell. It is so scary. It, you, you're going to shake and you're going to feel like you're going to just dissolve. And that's what we want to have happen. The more you do it, the braver you're going to feel. Your confidence is going to soar. You're going to feel like you could say anything to anybody. I am just blown away. <laughs> everything you said was so perfect. I would encourage everyone to rewind that and write everything Rory said down and you can pick and choose <laughs> what feels authentic and true to you. And as you were speaking, it really struck me how these words don't normally come to us in the moment when we're triggered, <laughs> right? So that's why having right. you over is so important. You know, it really struck me too. Uh, the level of the man that you are with is very distinctly availably out in the open when you start a conversation like this. Some men say things like, I can't hear your feelings right now, or I don't care how you feel, or you're always talking about yourself, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So if he does that, that's kind of a clue that maybe this isn't the right guy for me. And that's why I had such a hard time because he doesn't have the ability. So you have to be able to say, if he says that kind of thing, it's very important to me to feel heard. How can we do that together? And see what he says. Right. This is pretty high, high end stuff, right? This is, this is pretty high-end stuff, but imagine how you would feel if you had this kind of skill. Uh, I'm going to digress just for a second, but I think it might be helpful. I'll talk about my husband. My husband is Jeffrey Mark Levine, and he's a coach, an executive coach, and I somehow got him onto a master class with me, and we called it How to Talk to a Man. Well, from there, it was such a sensation. He wrote a book called How to Talk to a Man, which is just flying off my shelves. And so it was required him to have his own website. And now he's doing his own podcast. And he's coaching couples, mm. which is really interesting because men trust him. So women can bring their men and the men will show up because they trust him because he's a man. And yet he can really hear. So these qualities that he has as a person, they've really been developing 
over the years. He always had the good guyness when I first met him. But these skills are things that you develop over time. And I don't think even he know he knew he had them. But what he's always known is that he loves me. I am it. I am his woman. I'm all he's ever wanted. And he's a happy guy with me. And so he will do anything in his power besides uh, wreck his own self. He will absolutely not, you know, not stand up for himself. But he'll always do whatever he can to get us through everything. So what he says to me is, because we're starting these Rory and Jeffrey in the raw talks on the podcast, and it's like, oh my God, he wants to talk about serious stuff. <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm not sure I want people to hear that. And he said to me, I believe we can talk about anything, talk through anything. And when I heard him say that, I became panic stricken. I don't want to talk about everything. I don't want to talk about my the deepest feelings and the, the the crazy things I did and the things that we have had to work through in so many different areas. I feel embarrassed. I feel all that. Well, who do I care? Uh, out there, I think that if I let women hear that, it would be wonderful for everyone you know, to hear that what I have worked through. But I didn't want him to hear it. And I thought, how interesting. I am still keeping secrets from my husband. Hmm. And I have vowed, kind of, in the work we do together, that we can talk about anything. So I've really had to think about that and whether I'm going to say to him, you know, I don't think I can talk about this with you because I'm not, and it's because I still want to hold stuff against him. Does that make sense? I still yeah. want to hold stuff over his head. This is my inner self being terrified of real intimacy and not trusting him. After 30 plus years uh, and so much and children, I mean, I trust him. How can I not trust him? How can you trust a man after two weeks? It's so hard. You can't. It's the chemistry that overpowers you. But after a relationship gets built, the chemistry is built through this intimacy, which is terrifying. So when you want to do a do-over or something about him bothers you and you want to say something, not only is that thing bothering you, not only is that thing what's in your mind, not only do you want to say to him, you know, can you just fix this? or this is how I feel, we don't want to say that. We want to punish him. We mm -hmm. want to hit him over the head. We want to make him feel bad. That is how we were as children trying to survive. And as soon as we can recognize that thing happening in us, like, I really want to hurt him. I want to keep a secret from him. I want to keep an arm's distance from him. It's the most fascinating thing in the world to me these days. This is, for me, where Rory Ray has come to, which is, yeah, I could talk. I have skills. I probably have the most intimate relationship among most intimate relationships on an emotional level. But I still want to keep secrets, and I still want to protect myself, and I still want to make him feel bad. And I believe that it's because of an internal thing inside me that just does not accept or want to see me happy, is afraid for me, is afraid of everything in the whole world. And so that is what I'm kind of want to talk about now, which is how do we start to feel powerful in our honest to goodness, feminine energy, how do we start to feel so powerful that we can actually say anything, that we can actually share anything, that we can actually be everything we are in front of him? That is so beautiful. And I'm just feeling how important it is to have the right man, like you said, who just, you can't shake him off of you. It's so important to choose a man who knows that you're it and you are all he wants, right? I hear from so many women who are just hanging on to or trying to hang on to men who are halfway out the door and they're so afraid of saying the wrong thing that 
they're going to push that guy out the door completely. And I would say you want to be 100% open and authentic like this and let the men who are halfway out the door go, right? Because you don't want to just keep trying to hang on to the guy who doesn't know that you're it and he wants to work things out with you. 100% right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is so true. And yet, I remember it's so hard to yeah. let go of anyone because you really don't believe there's ever going to be anyone else. The The feeling of lack of men is overpowering out there. And the truth of it is, this is, this is what I see as the truth. I believe that, you know, there's this, this story about people who have never seen something not being able to see it at all, like who've never known what a boat was, not able to see the boat coming to the island, that we cannot see what we do not know exists. We just are actually our brains cannot comprehend it. We could see colors maybe, but we can't see structure. We can't see it. And I believe we cannot see men, that there are tons and tons and tons of men out there blanketing our worlds that we cannot see because they are not the men we see. They don't have a certain look. They don't have a certain nose, a certain mouth, a certain hand, a certain movement, a certain hair, a certain this, a certain that. And we don't just turn off of him. We can't see him. And we will basically hold him so far away that there's no chance of us getting to know if there's something deeper. And then the opposite would be letting guys who were nice guys continue to date us. And we just can't feel anything because we can't open anything up. We're just afraid. And yet that man really isn't right for us. But the fact that he's not right makes it just as safe for us as the really scary, handsome, charismatic guy who also isn't right for us. We're just constantly only seeing men who are not right, not partnership material for us. So how do we see all these, you know, hundreds of men just in our vicinity who are actually possibly right to us, but we actually can't even see them? I think that online dating is awesome because it in, enables us to see men showing up on our screens, et cetera, that we would never actually see. So for me, the coaching that would go around that would be what makes you swipe past a guy? What makes you ignore a guy who reaches out to your picture? And can he see you? Isn't it the same way? Can he see only the women that he thinks exist, but he can't see you, really? And so he doesn't, you know, click on you on online dating. So that's where matchmaking and getting set up help. Because somebody's throwing somebody at you rather than them having to see you in the first place. Uh, dating uh, things hopefully are opened up again those you know mixers and meetings mm -hmm. where you run into people that are organized so that guys don't have to come toward you but are organized so you keep being set up talking so you have an ability to see this guy so that is my you know second big thing which is are you seeing him or I, sometimes i see my husband of 30 years as if i don't know him I'm just choosing to see one aspect of him. I don't even see him as a whole person. I just want to see a handsome man. So if he doesn't look like a handsome man in a certain moment, I, I, can, I won't see him. If, if he's not talking to me in the way I want to be talked to, I won't see him. And I think that's what we do. Is that making sense? Go add to that, Elena. Yeah, I think there's this tendency to think that what we've experienced up until this point is all there is, right? And so if you've only experienced men abandoning you or fading away, the ones you want, right? And then the men who are pursuing you, you're not interested. It's like these two sides of the spectrum. And we don't think that we can have it all in one man. We don't think we can have the emotional availability and the attraction and passion and chemistry in the same guy. I see it so often in comment sections on some of my videos on YouTube 
just that there are no good men out there. And it's just heartbreaking because there are so many amazing men who just want to be loyal and devoted to you forever. But some women just are not seeing those guys, even if they were right in front of them, they wouldn't even recognize them as a good guy. They would think, oh, I just don't feel anything for him. Right. Absolutely correct. And this continues through the relationship because mm -hmm. we continually want to bail for f out of fear. And hopefully the man actually has more bravery than we do. And he'll just stay, which tends to happen, actually. They, they so tend true. to stick longer in, in, in a more powerful, courageous way than we do. It's They're, so true. I think about um, all the ways I tried to push my husband away when we started dating. <laughs> I thought yes. this amazing guy. He's everything I'm saying I want and more. And I'm trying to throw reasons at him of why I might not be the right one. And he just stood there and he said, nope, what I want is you and everything that comes along with that. I don't think I've ever talked about that before. It might be a topic for a whole nother episode, isn't it? How to see oh, yeah. the right man and not push him away, right? Yes. And it's not going to stop, Helena. Mm -hmm. Everything that goes deeper, 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 you're going to keep pushing, pushing, pushing. And maybe the message for today then about can you ever mess up is can you go deeper and deeper and deeper? Can you allow the noticing, the feeling that you have uh, messed up and the words that you've messed up and pushed him away? Can you look at that and go, oh, that's maybe just something I get to figure out, work through, feel through, and drop to a deeper level in myself so that the next time it shows up, I will feel that I'm wanting to destroy and wreck and I'll be a wrecking ball and push them away however possible and catch that before I say anything so that I can catch that and then focus on myself. Wouldn't it be magic if a guy did something, and he said, why did you do that, blah, 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 and you wanna jump and defend yourself, and instead you feel, oh, I wanna do wrecking ball here, I just wanna level him, I wanna push him away, here's a good reason, and then I'm afraid I'm gonna push him away, and instead you drop down deeper and you go, whoa, this is a moment where there's a possibility for me to say something that's going to bring him closer, and I feel terrified, so I'm going to say that. And you look at him and go, you know what? I'm really feeling like this is like a deep moment, an opportunity for me to share what's going on with me, and I feel terrified. And see what he says. Amazing. He's it's so great. I think a man's response to everything we shared here today is going to give you so much information about what kind of guy he is, his intentions and interest level and what kind of partner he would be. Right. right. So you want to watch his response to you opening up like that. Yes. And, and yes, you do. And this is really important. So what's the worst that could happen unless he's physically violent, which that you run. Just you run at the hint of it. But if he's verbally violent, that's something you also want to take a good look at. But if he's just verbally patterning the kind of stuff like being defensive, we all know what that feels like. You know, we just push back when we feel pushed, right? Mm -hmm. So if he's doing that, that's maybe there's an opportunity for more conversation. So even if he's not brilliantly sweet, like, honey, how you, I'm, thank you for telling me how you feel. I really want to listen. Like my husband is able to do, your husband is able to do. And I'm telling every woman out there listening to this, there is many guys out there who are able to do that. You will be shocked how many men are able to stand there and do that. They, they stand there and go, okay, what is it you want? What is it you need? What should I do? They're willing to do that. So we're afraid of getting to that level and we don't believe because we don't see that they can do this. But what if you could say when he behaves badly, let's say, he says, well, I don't want to listen. I'm not going to do anything. If you were able to look at him and stand there and say, you know, I really hear the anger and the frustration in you and you slip it to him his feelings that you actually can get. Because instead of getting just, oh, he's an idiot, 
you're an idiot not listening to me. You say, I really fear, feel you, you know, this distance between us and that, you know, this doesn't feel good to you. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't think, you know, you're not thinking that this is a good thing. How can we talk in a way that makes me feel good? And you just keep approaching it, but you're also noticing what's going on with him. That is like a new skill that I, I love to talk about. I call it being coach-like. It's like where you feel like running for the hills, you feel triggered, you feel like hitting him, you feel just anything but getting closer, and you're making a decision in that moment that getting closer to this guy emotionally, if he's not violent, is is actually not going to hurt you. It's actually going to make you stronger and it's going to help your skill set. And it's something he's there for you to work with. That's what dating is. That's what circular dating is. Even in a relationship, he's there to work with you so that you can be deeper and more wonderful even than you are right now. And you're already wonderful, but you can bring it out. So if he behaves badly, instead of just, you know, dumping it, you go, Hey, can we talk about this more? This feels so like there's something here. I hear how you're feeling, you know, and, and pulling away. What can we do to save this moment? And see if you could actually share your own stuff without trying to engage him, without leaning forward and going, you know, what should I do? What should I do? Anything like that. Instead of doing that, you lean back and you say, what can we do? What can you do to help me? How can you help me? And just keep doing it like that. And, and see where he goes. Give him a second chance, a third chance. There's nothing horrible going to happen for you. You're just going to get more skills and want to be a coach with me. You're going to say, Rory, I want to be a coach. I was so good with my guy. <laughs> <laughs> so true. When you were talking about that, I go, oh, it sounds like she's being coached like with her man, which is so amazing. Oh, my goodness, Rory. This was so brilliant. Do you want to try and do some kind of recap? I know we covered so many things here today, but I think it's so important. I would love to recap these points and then anything else you want to say on this topic. I would love to hear it. All right. And then we'll have to do more, more of these where we're raw about husbands and um, silly. And I, I think we get so far when we do this because you're so brilliant. Oh, thank it's you. Like, yeah. I know only person a, I've ever talked to. That oh my can. gosh. Thank you so much. I know we have a live episode coming up in June, so we can have people ask questions or even call in with their situation and talk to us personally. I'll include links in the episode details for how you can join my live broadcast, which is totally free. But yeah, let's hear a recap of all of these points. I am loving everything you shared. I don't think I've ever heard you talk about this in this way before. So this was great. All right. Well, First, we talked about um, what messing up looks like to us. And it just looks like, oh, I pushed him away, right? Well, the recap is that we examine later why we want to push him away and that that is a given. We all want to push these guys away. And if we could kind of drop in to our, oh, the Feminine Energy Workshop, that's what this is all about the Feminine Energy Workshop. We do it at the last Sunday of every month. It's brilliant. And um, this is where we try and drop below this part where we just give up and start just groveling instead of going deeper into, hey, how can I actually build this in a way that's so phenomenal and get past my fears of intimacy and my desire to push him away. So we went to there. So what we usually do, have done when, we, when we've when we messed up or feel like we've messed up and you can't really mess up, right? If it's all a thing of learning how to go deeper with the man, so then it's a process with him, is, you know, outright attacking him. You did this, you did that, you did this. Asking him why he did this, which is a more vague and kind of semi-sweet, very inauthentic way to attack him. And then ways that we try to fix it of groveling and texting and getting into our masculine energy. We think groveling's feminine. It's not. It's total masculine energy. Mm. It's trying to fix it. So we don't want to do that. And we also don't want to shut down and run and say, I wasn't for me. We want to, which is the meat we got into, practice with a coach, 
or in the mirror or against the wall or in the workshop where there's, you know, coaches working with you one-to-one -one in breakout rooms or so many things in siren school where you can get coached. And I'm sure Helena can lead you to lots of great places also is to take these moments that are so confusing. Like I want to push him away. I want to hit him. I want to kill him. I want to run after him. And it's all very confusing as the opportunity to drop, like it's the uh, strainer at the top. And we want to drop through the strainer and leave all that garbage up on top and drop through more our true selves, find out what we want, how we feel, when we feel lonely, when we feel abandoned, how to redo that situation by speaking to him from that deeper place. And then later actually hearing him as well as our own selves. Sounds like a pretty awesome course, doesn't it? Maybe we should put a course together like that. Oh, that sounds amazing. From messing up to redo to deeper connection. It's so needed out there. I know it's something that we all deal with, even in amazing, close, connected relationships. These things come up from time to time, right? Yes, they have to. Otherwise, you don't keep going deeper. And, right. you know, if we don't go deeper, we just stay at a certain level and we get bored. Yeah. So true. I just love everything you're sharing, Rory. I know you mentioned the Feminine Energy Workshop, which is such an amazing thing to offer. It's so inexpensive. And you mentioned it was the last Sunday of every month ongoing, but people can just show up once or you might even have a season ticket now. I'm not sure. Would you like to talk a little bit more about that? Well, well I do have a season ticket. It's six months. Plus you get uh, all the recordings from uh, 2021. That's Ooh. just part of the package. So it's like, you know, and then you don't have to keep signing up every month. And I think you get some other perks too. And it's a real bargain. It's, it's only $70 to come on a Sunday. It's 90 minutes. Uh, I'm in the bleachers watching. You, you might see me, but the coaching is done by Naomi Thompson, Beth Ellen, Natalina Love, and about five or six brilliant coaches who will be with you in breakout rooms that are not recorded. And uh, you pay $17. Like, that's even less expensive than a lunch, a good lunch. And everybody stays to the end. It's just so much fun. There's just so much. And while Naomi or uh, Beth Ellen are working and coaching people, you know, throughout the general hosting part of it, uh, the other coaches are actually coaching through the written chat screen. It's like an awesome thing. I, 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 I'm addicted myself. I actually show up for 90 minutes every time. I just, I always learn something and uh, it's just so live and vibrant. We're just all dealing with feminine energy. You know, what does it actually mean? It's so easy to talk about, you know, and you know that I came out long ago. I was, and the history, I did a whole set of videos on the history of feminine energy, but I've been there from the very beginning. I feel like uh, Pat Allen and Shakti Gawain and Shirley Luthman, I, I wish I could sit and talk with them, but this whole concept of feminine energy is about falling down into your core, into your feelings, your emotions, this roiling sea that we have learned because we've been in a masculine energy society forever, we feel that it's worthless. It's just a bunch of chaotic feelings. It's not. It's where all the power is. It's like we're the power pot. And we still think of ourselves as useless in that way. If we can actually access that feminine energy, it's like everything changes. You know, we'll no longer be afraid to speak to men straightforward. We'll not have to worry about what we're saying. Everything will just come out so honest and truthful and feel so good. I love it. I know we did a whole podcast episode on how to draw a man in like a magnet with your feminine energy. So he'll yes. want to stay forever. That was such a great episode. You talked about the history of feminine energy and exactly how to do it. Because I know we talk about this, how it's so easy to make some kind of intellectual concept around it, which is the exact opposite of feminine energy. So I love that you have this workshop with your coaches now. It's just a one-time payment. They can drop in on a Sunday. It's not a monthly subscription, right? No. It's just like, oh, show up for lunch. <laughs> mm -hmm. Bring your lunch. 
I it, love it. When it was cold, Naomi, make sure you curl up in a blanket and we'll just sit in there. It's it's like Zoom, but we're not all sitting, you know, paying attention in that way. We're all absorbing all this just reassurance that we're heading in the right direction when we're actually listening to ourselves. Amazing. And I love you can get personally coached with your unique situation. So that will be the first link in the description or episode details if you'd like to join. And I know each one has its own theme, right? Yes. Great. Okay. That sounds but, it, but it's all personal coaching, really. Mm -hmm. They've started to do it that way with thematic element. Got it. Well, this was great, Rory. I'm just so thrilled to have heard things from you that I've never heard before. I think this is going to be so helpful for everybody, no matter where they are in their love life. So thank you so much for joining me today. Is there any last words of wisdom you want to share before we close out? No, just <laughs> this is so much fun. <laughs> so much and, fun. Yes. And love to you. Love yes. to everyone out there. Again, we're going to be doing a live broadcast of my podcast in June. So I go live every other Tuesday at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern time, which is 3 o'clock Pacific time. I'll include a link for how to join my live broadcasts. You can join Rory and I in a couple months and get your personal questions answered live in real time. This was amazing, Rory. Thank you so much. I hope we can do this again soon. Absolutely. If you're tired of struggling in your love life and you want a proven system to get into and maintain a relationship where you're consistently loved, valued, and cherished, go to forever1234.com. Again, that's forever1234.com.